Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial for Kiwi Chowdown. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as we play it, and I will be showing one out of the game's four rounds today. Now, I do want to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you can find a bunch of ways to really help things out, and some of them come with perks, like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos will be made. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in a pinned comment. The final thing I'd like to mention is the fact that this is a prototype version of the game, so the art and components that you see here will not necessarily match those in the release version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, there is an island in the middle of the table, swarming with different players' kiwi birds, and each player also has a leader kiwi with a miniature associated with that specific card. Now, in this game, we are going to go through four seasons, and within each season, we are going to play three cards, and those cards will let us do things like move our kiwis around, which could also push other kiwis out of the hexes we move to, depending on how big we are. When we focus on the map, you'll notice that some of these kiwis are two tokens tall, and another action in this game involves spending food to feed kiwis in order to make them bigger. Now, a kiwi can never be more than size 3, and if you feed a size 3 kiwi, it will explode and then move all kiwis from that area into adjacent spots. And it's important to note that you can feed your opponent's kiwis to make them larger and potentially make them explode if that's advantageous to you. The other main thing we're going to be doing involves building nests out onto the board. We have to spend food to do this, and these nests will give us immediate as well as ongoing benefits for the rest of the game. Once we have each played three cards in a season, we will then check the season scoring card. These are randomized at the start of the game, and these will give an extra benefit to the player who matched the condition the best, and then all the other players will get a side benefit. After that, players can then claim specific hexes on the board with domain tokens they have in front of them. Now, these tokens have a terrain type on the backside, and you can reveal one of these in the first three seasons and then place it onto a specific terrain spot. As long as you have a majority of Kiwi pieces on that location, you will then flip this over and put one of your pieces face down on top of it, and that will be worth one victory point at the end of the game to the player who put that piece down. Now, once we get to the fourth and final season of the game, we can place as many of these domain tokens down as we want, and then we can count up our points. Each domain token is worth one point, and there are a couple other ways to get points based off of these season goals as well as one of the nests that we can build, but for the most part, most of our points will come through these domains, and the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now, I'll go into detail about how each of these things work when we bump into them while playing, and at this point, I think it's time to start the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player over here, and we have the starting player token, which means we will be the first player in the first season of the game. So, let's begin this first season, and within each season, there are always going to be four phases. The first phase is the season change phase, and we don't actually do anything for this in the first season of the game, so we can move on to the second phase where we can play our action cards. So let's focus over here on our player area, and as you can see, we do have a leader card over here. That shows that the leader kiwi Zen is going to be in our control for the entire game, and this card details some specific abilities for that leader, which I will cover soon. Well, during the action phase, what we have to do is select one card from our hand and put it into the leftmost open slot above our board. At the moment, we have a feed card, we have a move card, and we have a wild card. Now, the wild card can be played to perform any of the three main actions, which are feed, move, and build, or you can play the wild card in order to gain the associated benefits on the right-hand side. For this one right here, we could take a random food and a random domain marker from their bags. We can look down here and see at the start of the game, we have five of these food tokens and two domain markers, and these are face down so that our opponents don't know what they are, but since we're playing as the purple player, I'm just going to leave these face up so we can remember which of these domains we are trying to control at the end of the season. For our first action, I think let's go with a move card. So we can place this right over here, and now we must move two of our Kiwi tokens out on the map. 
It's important to note that you cannot use these movements to move the same kiwi twice. This has to be two different kiwis, and you must perform both of these moves. You cannot perform just one of them. So let's focus on the map, and I think let's move this size 2 kiwi here. Now it's a size 2 because it has two kiwi tokens stacked on top of it, and we can move it into an adjacent region. Now, I think we want to move into this region here, and after you move into a region, if there are any kiwis that are a smaller size than the kiwi that just moved, then the player who just moved can push up to two of those smaller kiwis into other adjacent regions. You can push your opponent's kiwis, or you can push your own. And since this is a size 2, and in this region there are just size 1 kiwis, that means we can do up to two pushes. I think with the first of these pushes, let's push this red kiwi out of this zone, and let's push them down over there. And then with our second push, we can move this yellow kiwi out, or we can move our own kiwi over, and I think that is what I want to do. Now, this might not seem like it's done much for us. As you can see, we've just moved around in these flowery areas. We've only kicked one of the opposing kiwis out, but this is going to set us up for a great move with our leader kiwi very soon. Now, I am focusing on these flower areas right now because for the first season, there is a goal that says the player with the most kiwi tokens in the flower areas is going to get a better bonus than everybody else. The leader will get a domain token, whereas everyone else will get a random food. Now, I did say that everyone else gets this bonus, but it's possible that might not happen. If there is a tie for the player being the best at that specific requirement, then the tied players get the secondary benefit and no one else gets anything. Once again, so far we've just moved around in these flowery areas. We haven't actually increased the number of our tokens in them, but now we have one more move, and I think we want to do that move with our leader, Zen. With that in mind, let's focus down over here. Now, in each of the game's four seasons, you can use the leader effect once, and then you tilt the card sideways to show that you cannot use it again in this season. That means right now we could use this effect since we haven't used it yet, or we could just move Zen as if they were a size 3 kiwi. In this case, though, let's use the effect. That says, instead of doing a standard movement, we can switch the positions of Zen and any one of your Kiwi tokens, and then you push up to four Kiwi tokens adjacent to the hex that Zen moved to. So, we are going to use this, and then we can swap the position of Zen with any of our other Kiwi tokens, so they could go clear across the board with this action if we wanted. Now, in this case, we actually just want to go to this adjacent spot, but we are going to perform this action to switch with this kiwi right here. And remember, we pushed that kiwi into this spot with this move over here. Now, the reason we pushed that is so that we could do this switch action, because now Zen is going to push up to four of these tokens out of the region they just landed in. Each of these can be pushed into different spots or the same spot, and I think we are actually going to push all of these into this center area here. There are three of these Kiwi tokens to push, so this size 2 will go there, this size 2 one will go into the middle, and this size 1 will go there as well. And just like that, we have kicked out three value worth of red Kiwis and two value worth of yellow Kiwis from this area, and remember we kicked out another red Kiwi down over here. So we have not added more of our own Kiwis into the flower areas, but we did move a significant number of our opponent's Kiwis out of those areas, which means overall this was a great move for us. Now that we've completed our two mandatory Kiwi moves, we can perform optional Kiwi movement if we have the food to afford it. As you can see, each extra movement is going to cost two food, and it can be any combination of yellow and green for us, and the specific color combinations are different for each player. That means we could spend two yellow, two green, or one of each in order to get extra movement. After you pay for it, you can move a new Kiwi, or you can move one of the Kiwis that you've already moved in this specific turn. Now, I don't think it makes sense for us to spend food to get extra movement in this moment. Well, our action is done, so the final thing that we have to do is draw a new card from the top of our deck, and this is a build action card. We can place that into our hand. After that, play is going to move clockwise to the yellow player, and they can choose one card to play. After considering their options, they would like to build. The way this works is they can build one of their six nests out onto a region where they have at least two of their tokens and where they have more Kiwi presence than anybody else, and there cannot be any other nests on that region at this point. Now, there are three different types of nests that each player can build, and we all have the same types, and in order to construct a second level nest, you must construct the one above it first. 
As you can see, this cost says you have to spend two identical resources to build one of these, and the second level costs three identical resources. So if they wanted to build this nest here, the top one in that column would have to be built first. However, if they are able to build this one first, they could build this next without having built any of these other ones. Now they've decided to build this control nest here, and that is going to cost two identical food resources. So these are going to go back into the bag, and then they can place this down onto a region where they have at least two of their Kiwi tokens, and where they have more Kiwi presents than anyone else. So they can focus out here, and it's worth noting that these leader tokens count as size 3 tokens for the purposes of pushing around other tokens, but when it comes to actually controlling these areas for the nests and for dominance later on, these just count as one token. So at the moment there are only two legal places yellow could build this. One is over here because they have at least two tokens and a majority, and the other is over there because they have the two tokens and a majority with three compared to our two. Here in the middle, they have three Kiwi power compared to the four of the red player, so this is not a legal place for them to build at the moment. They've decided to build this nest into that flower field, and then they will immediately get the benefit printed in the bottom left corner. Now that shows a lightning bolt as well as a Kiwi movement icon, which means they can immediately move one of their Kiwis in the same way that I showed you on our turn. However, they are not allowed to spend extra food for extra movement with this bonus movement. After considering their options, they want to move this Kiwi into that area, and this is a size 2, which means it can push up to two lower-sized Kiwis out of this new region. So let's focus over here, and Yellow has decided to push these two tokens. Remember, they can't actually push this leader since it is effectively a size 3, and the Kiwi they just moved in is a size 2. Now when they push these tokens, they can go into adjacent regions, or they could actually push these tokens off the board entirely because they are next to the edge of the board. Now this is what Yellow wants to do, and they're going to push both of these tokens off the board just like that. And it is worth noting that while they could not push this leader, other leaders can push leaders. So if this leader entered this area right here, they could push that leader. But these leaders are never pushed off of the map. If you try to push a leader off the map, you instead place this down onto any adjacent spot around the perimeter of the island. So they've done their two pushes, and both of these Kiwis were knocked off the island. Next up, these two Kiwis that were pushed off will be placed off to the side of the red player's board in a Kiwi reserve. As we play through the game, we will be able to pull these Kiwis off of the main board here, and you never add these tokens back on, so if both of these were gone and these two were removed, they would still go into the reserve, not back over here onto the flock board. Now, I will discuss how we deploy these Kiwi tokens very soon. Well, Yellow has completed their bonus for constructing this nest, and I'm sure you've noticed there are other icons on this nest. Now, in the top left corner, there is this kind of grayed out area and some more icons, and these are benefits that Yellow is going to gain during each of the game's season change phases. When we look back over here, remember the first phase of each season is a season change, so that means at the start of the next season, Yellow is going to be able to gain one random food, and they will be able to perform one Kiwi movement. When we glance back at Yellow's board, we can also see these season change bonuses easily printed on it. So you can tell what the immediate bonuses will be as well as the ongoing bonuses are for constructing each of these nests. If they had constructed this one here, then obviously they would gain two random fruit from the bag during each of the season changes. Now there is one other icon that shows up specifically on the control nests, which are these in the middle column. As you can see, that icon says plus two yellow kiwis, and that means that this control nest is worth two yellow kiwi birds on this region for the rest of the game. It's worth noting this cannot be moved or destroyed as the game goes on, and remember, there can only be one nest in each of the regions in the game. Now they can flip this over because those other icons are on their flock board, and now they can easily just see the bonus of plus two yellow kiwis. So that means right now, they effectively have three yellow kiwis in this terrain area. Before we move on, I'd like to briefly look at these other nests. Now the other control nest also adds plus two Kiwi worth of power for that player, and it gives an income of gaining one of these domain markers. And remember, these are the main way we get victory points at the end of the game, so drawing more of these increases your chance of getting more points before the game is over, so that is a great piece of income. 
over here in the trees. Both of these are going to gain the food as an income and then as an immediate bonus. This one gives one food from the bag and that one gets you a food and it lets you increase the size of one of your kiwi. And I'll talk about increasing kiwi size very soon when I discuss feeding. Finally, over here with the cave nests, the top one lets you place a single kiwi on the board as an immediate benefit, and as an ongoing benefit, you get a fruit as well as one kiwi being placed onto the board. So this is a way to replenish the kiwis that are out there on the board, as they can get knocked off by push actions like we've just seen. The second level cave immediately puts two kiwis on the board and puts two more on the board in every one of the season change phases. And this specific cave is worth one victory point at the end of the game if you are able to place it out onto the board. All right, yellow is done with their build action so they can finish their turn by drawing another card. And now it's time for the red player to go. In this case, they've decided to perform a feeding action. The way this works is they have to spend two food, and they must be two different types of food. In this case, they've decided to spend blue and yellow food, and they can put this back into the bag. After spending the food, they can now target one of their own kiwis or one of their opponent's kiwis to feed it. If they target one of their own, then they are going to gain one random domain token from the bag, and if they target one of their opponent's kiwis to feed, then the red player will get two domain tokens instead of one. In this case, they've decided to target one of their own kiwis. And that's going to be this one right over here. Then what they do is take the leftmost token from their flock board and place it on top of that kiwi to show that they fed it and it is now a size 2, whereas it was a size 1 before. Now over here on the board, we start with 8 of these tokens on it. And as I mentioned before, you never place tokens back onto this board. And once you get somewhat farther down the line, you can get immediate bonuses for placing these specific kiwis. As you can see, that could be getting extra food, domain tokens, or movement. And you can also remove these kiwi tokens when you place new kiwis on the board through actions like this one here. And I'll show you how that works later on in the tutorial. Well, they did target one of their own kiwis, which means as a benefit, they are now going to gain one random domain token from the bag. So they can dig around the bag and pull a new one out and put it next to the other three they had. You may have noticed that they started with more fruit as well as domain tokens than we did, and that's because we were the starting player and the red player was going last, so they get even more benefits. Now, I do want to mention that when you do a feed or placing action and you don't have any more kiwis on your board, that is the time that you can start placing these reserve kiwis out, and you can also place these reserve kiwis out when you claim domains out on the board, and I'll explain how that works later on in the tutorial. Before we move on from the red player's feeding action, I would like to discuss two other things. The first is that you are never allowed to feed any of these leaders on the board. And the second is what happens when you try to feed a size 3 kiwi. Now, obviously, we have a size 2 kiwis out here already, and they can go up to a size 3, which means they have three of these discs in a stack. And if you try to feed a size 3 kiwi, then instead of adding another token down, that kiwi is going to explode. Now, when that happens, all of the three tokens from that exploded kiwi go into that player's specific reserve, and then every other kiwi on the spot where the explosion happened are pushed into adjacent locations, and the decision is made by the feeding player. So that means you could feed an opponent's size 3 kiwi to explode it and move kiwis all over the board, and remember, every time you feed an opponent's kiwi, you do get two domain tokens out of the bag instead of one. With this in mind, you can tell that size 3 kiwis are a risk. They are powerful for pushing other kiwis around and also for claiming various objectives. But of course, somebody might decide it's worth the food and the action to explode it to really change the makeup of the board. All right, red is done with their turn, which means it's once again time for us to go. And as always, we have three cards to choose from. It's worth noting, once we go through our entire deck, we simply shuffle up our discard pile and make a new deck to continue to draw these cards. Now, on this turn, we can do a build action, a feeding action, or we do have this wild card, which could act as a standard build, feed, or double move like we've seen already, or we could play this to get a fruit as well as a domain marker from the bag. In this case, I think let's do a build action, and that means we have to spend two fruit of the same color. The only way we can do that is by spending these two here, although it is worth noting that you can spend these domain tokens as if they were one wild fruit token. But of course, these are the main way that we get victory points, so you need to be very careful about spending these as food. After making this payment, we can build any of these first row nests. And I think let's go for this one. 
There is an argument to be made about a control nest being good for trying to obviously keep control of various areas and vie for the season bonuses, but I also like the idea of just placing more kiwis out to get more kiwis on the board and get bonuses for removing these from our flock board. Now, when we place this out, we will get to place one kiwi down as a bonus, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We first have to find a legal place to build this onto the map. Remember, the location we build onto has to have at least two of our kiwi tokens, and we have to have a majority of kiwi strength in that spot. And right now, we are very spread out, except for this location here. This is the only valid place we have to build in this moment, so let's construct right over here, and then as an immediate bonus, we can add one more kiwi to the board. When we add new kiwis, we first try to take them from our flock board, and if all of these are gone, we then go to a reserve. Now we always pick from the left to the right, so we can take this kiwi here, and immediately add it onto any spot on the board that already has one of our kiwis on it. In this case, I think let's go over here. That way we could potentially construct another nest in this specific spot, although right now we don't actually have the fruit to afford that nest, but I still think this is a pretty good spot for us. Well, that's finished our nest building action, and remember at the start of the next season, this nest is going to get us one random fruit, and it will also let us place another kiwi onto the board. So we can finish our turn by drawing a card, bringing our hand size back up to three, and it's once again time for the yellow player to go. In this case, they've decided to play one of their wild cards. With this, they could build, feed, or do a standard two movement action, or they could gain one random fruit, they could add a kiwi to the board, and they could increase the size of one of their kiwis. They've decided they want to do the right-hand side of this, so they'll start by gaining one random fruit, and then they can place that into their area. Now it's worth noting that there is a limit of 10 fruit that each player can have at any point in time. If they ever go over that, they must immediately discard down to having 10 fruit in front of them. Next up, they are going to add a new kiwi to the board onto a spot that already has one of their kiwis, and they're going to put it right over here. After that, the final thing that they could do is increase the size of one of their kiwis. Again, they can do this by taking a kiwi token from their flock board, and they've decided to place it right over here. So that means they are now tying with us for controlling this spot. So that means neither of us would be able to build a nest on this specific region. That's finished the yellow player's turn. So now red can go, and they have decided to do a move action. For the first of these, they are going to move their leader, Scully, and they are going to use Scully's ability. So let's focus on the card, and it says they can move Scully up to three hexes. Then they push up to three Kiwi tokens that are size two or smaller from the square they move to up to three hexes in any direction. So as you can see, Scully is obviously a scary bird that frightens other Kiwis away from the location that they end on. In this case, they've decided to move Scully one, two, three times onto this location here, and now they can push up to three Kiwis up to three times away from this spot. Again, they can only target Kiwis of size one or two, and there are four targets in this area. In this case, they've decided to target yellow twice and us once, and they are going to push these tokens one, two spaces, which means they're actually pushing these Kiwis off of the map. So that means these two Kiwis are going to be returned to the yellow player's reserve. And then this double stack that we put here is also going to be pushed off the map, and it'll go into our own reserve. And just like that, Scully has scared a ton of Kiwis away from that flower region. After that, they must take another move with a different Kiwi, and they are going to move this one onto that flower region there. After this, they would love to perform a move action, but they spent their yellow and blue with a feeding action earlier in the round, and they're now starting to regret that, so this is all the movement they can perform on their turn, and that means they can finish their turn by drawing a card. Alright, we now get to take our final action in this first season of the game, and while I would love to construct another nest, we don't have two of the same type of fruit, and we also don't have any legal spots to build a nest out on the map. Now I do want to mention that if we don't want to do any of these actions on our turn, we could always take any of these cards and put it face down in front of us, and then simply gain one random food from the bag to put down into our area, and that would be our entire turn. Obviously that is not a very impactful turn though, so I don't think we want to do that. I would certainly rather play this card to get a food as well as a domain marker instead of just playing one card for a food. Now we could play this one out as a move action instead if we want, and of course we have a feeding action that we can go with on this turn, so we have a decent number of options. 
I think let's just go with a feeding action for the moment. We can spend two different types of food and we will go with these two here. And then we can, I think, target one of our own birds to make it a size two. I don't think we want to go to a size three at this point because then one of our opponents could explode it. After considering our options out here, I think let's feed this bird. And since we targeted our own, we are going to take a single domain token out of the bag. Remember, if we targeted an opponent's bird and fed that, we would get two of these domain tokens instead of one. So we got this one here, which matches up with the flower regions. We actually have one of those already, and I will describe actually taking control of regions with these domain tokens very soon in the tutorial. And remember, you can also spend these as a wild fruit, so we could have technically built on this round from a fruit perspective, but we did not have the board position to make it happen. Either way, that is going to finish up our feeding action, and that is our last action for this first season of the game. This means it's time for the yellow player to go. And they've decided to play another wild card. This one would get them a random food and a random domain token, or they could do any other action. And they've decided they would like to do a standard move action, which again means they have to move two of their kiwis out on the map. For the first of these moves, they are going to take this kiwi and move it onto that spot there. And for their second move, they are going to move their leader, Chopin. Now, they are going to do a regular move. They're not going to use the special just yet, and they are going to move Chopin onto this spot right here. And that might not seem like it did very much, but now they've decided to spend fruit to take a third move action. For them, they have to spend two fruit in any combination of red and blue, and they have three of those options. They've decided to spend this blue and this red, and now they can move a new kiwi, or they can move a kiwi that has already moved on this turn, and this is the option they want to go for. In particular, they are going to move Chopin a second time. With this second move, they are going to use the special ability printed on that card, and when we focus on the card, it says they can move Chopin up to four hexes in a straight line, and then they push all kiwi tokens on all hexes Chopin moved through, except for the starting and ending hexes. With that in mind, I'm sure you can tell why they decided to move onto this spot with their first move, because now they're going to move Chopin in a straight line going through all of these areas, and they are indeed going to move one, two, three, four times, which is the max. Now, after that, they have to push every single Kiwi that is on all of the spots they moved through, not to the spot they started or the spot they ended, which means all of these Kiwis are now going to be pushed to one adjacent spot, and the yellow player gets to decide where each of them goes. On this hex here, they've decided to move all three of these kiwis over into this grassland. In the second hex Chopin moved through, they're going to move their own yellow kiwis onto this flower terrain here. And then they're going to move the rest of these over here. Finally, in this spot, they are going to move the red and purple kiwis onto this green area. And they'll move this yellow kiwi into that flower region. Yellow's turn is now coming to a close, and the red player can now take the final action of this first season. After considering their options, they want to build a nest. They will have to spend two identical fruit to do this, and they'll spend these two here, and they've decided to build a tree. Now this is going to immediately get them one random fruit back. So they can take that from the bag, and they got another green fruit. And then, of course, they have to place this down into a region with at least two of their Kiwi figures. And remember, the leader does count as one of those, and they also have to have the most strength in that spot. There also can't be a nest in that location already, and they have a couple of options available to them. And they've decided to build into this grassland. So they can flip this over, and that is just to remind them that during each of the next season change phases, they are going to get two random fruit. Well, that's finished a relatively quick turn for the red player. And now that everyone has played three cards in the season, we can move on from the action phase. This means we can move into the season card resolution phase, where we are going to look to the current season card and see who is going to get which rewards. Now this one right here is going to give the best reward to the player who has the most Kiwi power on field regions. Well, let's look at the board and start with ourselves. We get one from our leader, plus another two here and a two there. So we have five Kiwi power on the flower fields. Next up, the yellow player has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because they do have a control nest there. And finally, the red player has one, two. 
They had a bunch more before Chopin ripped through here and moved a bunch of these Kiwis away. That means yellow is the uh, leader for this specific goal, and that means they are going to gain this benefit, and everyone else will get that one over there in the right. Remember, if there is a tie for being the best at this specific goal, then all of the tied players get the right-hand benefit, and no other players get anything. But in this case, that is not happening. So the yellow player is going to gain one random region card, and then everyone else will gain one fruit. After that, we can discard this card. So yellow can take their region token. And then we will get a random fruit, and that is going to be yellow. And the red player is going to gain a blue. Well, we are now done with our season card resolution, but before we move on to the next phase, I would like to talk about the other season cards that we have out here. These were randomly placed at the start of the game, and in the second season for this game, the objective is having the least amount of Kiwi power on the green grassland fields. This card is the reason why the yellow player pushed so many of their opponent's Kiwis onto these grassland areas to try and make it harder for everyone else to have the least Kiwis on those by the time the second season is over. The better reward for this season lets that player take two random domain tokens, and everyone else can increase the size of one of their birds for free. Now over here, this one has players trying to have the most size two or three Kiwis on the map, and the player who has the most will get this reward, which lets them construct a nest without paying any fruit, and then everyone else can take two random fruit from the back. Lastly, this one here is going to check the number of nests that are built, which means based off of the order of these cards, the person who wins this is going to have a plus one nest advantage on everyone else in the fourth season. Remember, these cards are placed randomly, so they will not always be in this orientation. Now, the reward for this card here is actually one victory point for the player who has the most nests built. Normally, you discard these when you're done with them, but for this card, you actually give it to the player who had the most nests so that they know they will get one victory point at the end of the game, and then everyone else will get one random domain token. It's now time for us to move into the fourth and final phase of the season, where everyone can now claim a domain. This happens in player order, which means we get to go first, and we can take one of our domain tokens, which again should be faced down so our opponents don't see what they are, and we can place it onto one of the regions of the board as long as we have the most Kiwi power in that specific region. The region also has to match the specific color of that token. So we can look out at the map, and we could place this into that specific region because we have more Kiwi power than anybody else, and we could place this one into this region here because red has one. Uh, remember, these leaders only add one to the region dominance factor. So red has one, yellow has one, and we have two, so we could play either of these, and I figure let's go ahead and play this one out so that we have more region options as we go on in the game. Now what we have to do is place this into this specific region, and then we have to place a Kiwi token face down on top of that token. When we do this, we never take a Kiwi token from our flock board, unlike every other time that we've been placing Kiwi tokens. Instead, if we have any tokens in our reserve, we can take one of those, and if we don't have any tokens in our reserve, then we have to take a token from somewhere on the board, flip it face down, and put it on top of this. So it's not the worst thing in the world to have some of these in your reserve, and we will take this one from our reserve and put it down right there, and this means that no one else can place a domain token into this region for the rest of the game, and every one of these domain tokens is worth one victory point, so we have locked in one victory point for ourselves for the end of the game. It is worth noting that for all intents and purposes, this is not a Kiwi bird. That token is just there to show who is going to get that victory point. We still just have two Kiwi power in this specific region. All right, we've placed up to one of these down, which means we are done claiming domains, and we can move clockwise over to the yellow player. And they've decided to claim a mountain space. With this token, they're going to go over here, where they have just one Kiwi, but that is more than anyone else, so that is enough for them to dominate that specific area. Now, I do want to mention that when it comes to placing these domain tokens down, you can do that with just one of these control nests. If they had that over there and no other kiwi birds, they would still be able to place this onto the spot, because again, this acts as if it was two kiwi birds. Of course, this is actually over there. And then yellow can take a kiwi from their reserve and place it on top of that domain marker. Lastly, the red player can place one domain, and they have four options. In this case, they want to claim a flower domain, and they'll put it right over here where they have just one kiwi bird, but that is more than anyone else. 
They can take one of their birds from the reserve, flip it over, and place it down there. And now everyone has placed up to one domain token onto the board. Remember, as you go on in the game, you can never claim a spot that already has one of these locations. So as the game goes on, it will get more and more crowded. But it is worth noting that each location can have up to one domain token and up to one nest token. Well, we've finished the place dominance tokens phase, and I do want to mention that in the first, second, and third seasons of the game, it works just the way that I showed you. But once we get to the fourth season of the game, when we get to this specific phase, all players are going to reveal every single domain token they have in front of them, and they are going to claim as many domains as they can with these. So that means when we get to the fourth season, each player will have at most three tokens down, but then at the end of that fourth season, players could have as many as they possibly could, which is one reason why it's good to try and hoard these and not spend them as wild fruit because these are the main way we get victory points at the end of the game and I'll talk about that in more detail very soon. Well, this phase is over so we can move into the season change phase at the start of the second season of the game. Remember in the first season we just ignored this, but in the second, third, and fourth seasons we have a couple things to do now. The first thing that we do is pass the starting player token clockwise, so that means yellow will be the starting player for the second season, and then all players can take the cards that are in their action slots and put them into a discard pile. Remember, if you ever go to draw a card from your deck and you don't have any, you just shuffle up your discard pile and make a new deck. Next up, every player who used their leader ability can then spin it so that it is right side up to show that they can once again use that ability up to once in the upcoming season. Finally, in the new turn order, each player is going to gain all of the benefits for their constructed nests. So we'll start with yellow, and their one constructed control nest is going to get them a single random fruit token, and then they can also move one kiwi out on the board. After considering their options, they are going to move this kiwi here onto that location. They didn't want to leave it next to the edge of the board where it could be easily pushed off the board and into their reserve. After that, yellow could gain any other benefits for their completed nests, and they could gain these benefits in any order of their choosing, but of course they just have this one here. Next up, the red player can gain their nest benefits, and in this case they'll just gain two random fruit tokens. So they can take those from the bag, and they got a yellow and a blue. Finally, we can take our nest benefits. We have one constructed cave, and that one is going to get us a fruit, and it looks like we found a red fruit, and then we can place a new kiwi from our flock board onto a spot on the board that already has one of our kiwis. One thing we are keeping in mind with this placement is our current domain tokens are for flower and grass. Now, we will potentially be able to claim this one. We have a whole bunch of Kiwis on there, although these could be pushed off. And we also are going to be potentially trying to have the least number of Kiwis on grass areas. So with that in mind, perhaps it was a mistake to claim this over here. We probably should have claimed that one instead so that we could freely move these Kiwis off of it while still having that domain token already on there. But we're just going to have to roll with the mistakes that we have made. Well, I think let's just place this over here alongside our leader Zen. That way, if neither of these move, we could potentially claim this spot with the flower at the end of the next season, although it is pretty likely that we'll use Zen's movement ability at some point. But if we do remember, Zen swaps places with one of our Kiwis, so that would bring other ones over here, and I think this could work out pretty well for us. Now that everyone has gained all of their constructed nest benefits, we have completed the season change phase, and it would now be time to move into the action phase of the second season. But at this point, I am now going to stop playing through the game and instead discuss what happens once the game is over. Remember, the game is always going to be played over four full seasons, and near the end of the fourth season, when we do the domain claiming action, at that point, we can place as many of our domains down as we can. Remember, you are going to place these tokens from your reserve if you can, or other spots on the board, flipping those kiwis down and putting them on top of the tokens. This is a big goal of the game. You want to be able to place as many domain tokens down as you can at the end of the fourth and final season, because once we have finished that, we will then count up our victory points. Now, we are going to get one point for every one of our claimed domain tokens. We will also get a victory point if we happen to have a season card that has a victory point token on it, like this one here. And we will get a victory point if we have constructed our second level cave nest, which has a victory point right there. So as you can see, the vast majority of our points will come from these domain tokens, and there are just a couple of other ways to get points to add to it. 
Once everyone counts up their points, the player with the most points will be the winner. And if there is a tie, then the tie is going to be broken in the favor of the player with the most size 3 Kiwi tokens on the map. If there is still a tie, then you check the size 2s and then the 1s. And finally, you check to see who has the most unused domain markers to break the tie in that player's favor. Well, at this point, I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Kiwi Chowdown. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgamescom support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.